Hello, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? Okay, how's it? I'm Sheldon and this is the I am inside. The I am, referring to God. God calls himself an I am to Moses. When Moses asked him, who should I say you are? And God says, I am in Exodus. So yeah, so I've done a video on uh, what Christians believe and why we believe it, etc. If you want to see that, um, it's in my other videos, just go through my videos and you'll find it. Um, it's called What We Believe or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so another thing, another core doctrine of Christianity, well, um, most of Christianity is the doctrine of the Trinity. So the Trinity as a disclaimer is very difficult to explain. It's a concept that our limited minds uh, struggle to understand, but I'll do my best. So let's unwrap. Okay, so firstly, let's look at the word Trinity. The word Trinity is made up of two words, uh, tri and unity. Tri meaning three and unity meaning unity, <laughs> united, together, one. Um, three in one. So that's how the, where the word comes from. So surprisingly enough, the Bible actually doesn't say the word Trinity at all. The word Trinity comes from a concept um, that is alluded to within the Bible and that's displayed very clearly in my, my opinion. So firstly, I want to go into the biblical aspect of the, the Trinity and then I want to go into the logical part of the Trinity, which is quite hard to explain, which you'll see. But let's look at the biblical references of um, the Trinity. Yeah, so Jesus refers to the Trinity um, in Matthew 28 verse 18. So let me go there quick. Matthew 28, verse 18. So it's Matthew 28, verse 18. Okay. So in verse 19, it says, at the end of verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So why would Jesus say that? Why would Jesus mention the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? It's the Trinity. So for me already, as a biblical reference for the Trinity, this is enough. If the guy our faith is based on mentions the Trinity, then Trinity is biblical for me. So another place is one of the um, apostles, Paul, he speaks to the Corinthians and in 2 Corinthians. And he closes off what he says with something similar to what Jesus said. And he says, so where are we, Corinthians? Corinthians 13 verse 14 so this is the benediction the closing um, of the chapter and Paul says to the Corinthians he says um, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all amen so if somebody's closing it with something like that um, that's yeah this is it's obvious, that's, that seems like an obvious doctrine to me. Um, you get people who don't believe in the Trinity, they just believe one as three people. That's actually a doctrine called modalism, where, um, let me just go to my notes here. So modalism where they'd say that um, God was the Father in the Old Testament, He was Jesus in the New Testament, and then He was He's the Holy Spirit currently. So he's three different beings. He goes from one, he becomes the Father, then he becomes the Son, then he becomes the Holy Spirit. So the people who believe in modalism's defense for the, um, the mod their modalism where God is the separate modes throughout history is um, Colossians 2 verse 9. So let's go to, it says, For in him dwells all fullness of the Godhead bodily. That sounds like a good case for modalism. That for me actually um, defends the Trinity more. So the fullness of God is in Jesus. The fullness of God is in the Father. The fullness of God is in the Holy Spirit. So mm, for me, that's again not a. I don't think that's a good, argu a good argument. Um, so everything that is God is represented by Jesus. Everything that makes me human, everything 
that the human race relies on is in me, in my DNA. I represent human. I represent the human race, but I'm not every human, but I do represent every human. So me saying that I represent mankind doesn't stop, doesn't mean that um, there are no other humans out there or no other people, because obviously that's illogical. So <laughs> that defense isn't very good. I don't think so at least. Um, so another, um, another belief is that is uh, polytheism or tritheism, which is basically the opposite of monotheism, where Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit are are three separate beings. Yeah, that's not that's not yeah that's not right. <laughs> Jesus is fully God. The Holy Spirit is fully God, and God the Father is fully God. They are not each other. Jesus is not God the Father. God the Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not Jesus. So let's let's tackle tackle some logic. Um, so there needs to be an understanding with um, the logic of the Trinity is that to some extent there's going to be a limit. We are not going to be able to fully grasp the trinity um there's christian lingo called the mystery of the gospel or the um yeah just the mystery of the godhead and some people say it's an excuse but i think it's a i just think there's n there's nothing else we can do we've come to a point that we can't explain anymore we it's i'd like to say it's kind of like um us grasping the trinity is kind of like a a mosquito understanding nostalgia it's just it's just beyond comprehension he, a mosquito obviously is never going to understand nostalgia because it's a nuance of the human mind and it's something we experience so that's obviously something that can't be translated to mosquito language because yeah they just don't have the brain capacities to understand it they don't have the brain capacity to understand it um so we need to we need to approach it with that mindset is knowing that there's some part of the, the god that we're not of God that we're not going to understand and like some would say that as soon as we understand God we are then better than him because we and that's obviously heresy and that's um, yeah we can't we won't ever understand God He's greater than us um, so we need to approach it like that knowing that we are limited and there's stuff that's not going to be understood so I'm going to try and explain it in the two best ways I know um, so the two best ways I know is um, God is one being, three person, one being, three persons. Um, how does that work? How can something be one and three at the same time? Is one in being and three in person. And that sounds like a contradiction, but a contradiction would be is one in being and three in being, or one in person and three in person, which that's a contradiction. We believe his, his whatness, what he is, what makes him is God. His whatness is God. His who-ness, who he is, is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So he's three who's and one what. Thumbs up, soldier. He's one what. Um, and like, this is difficult to understand because like the Bible says we are made in his image. Just like an image of a car does not represent the intricacies of a car. If I gave you a picture of a Ferrari, it's not that picture's not going to go as fast as the Ferrari, obviously, unless you stick it to the Ferrari. <laughs> but it's that picture of the Ferrari is not the Ferrari. So just like we are an image of God, we are not God. We can't comprehend. We're a limited version of God. Um, the other logical way that is explained is is visual, because I'm a visual person. Vi anything visual explained visually is helpful for me. So there's this. Um, this video by the Bible Project, where they have this 2D plane. It shows this 2D plane. So for people who don't understand the difference between 2D and 3D, it's two dimensions versus three dimensions. A two dimension is would be a picture. So you've got a photo of, of someone. You only have the picture is a square, this axis across, and then it's got this axis up. It's a flat surface. Then you get 3D, which is the same two um, Axes plus another one going deep. So we have like this depth now. We have both um, left 
left and right, up and down, and also in and out. So we have depth too. So in this video, you see these three separate circles. Um, so one being God the Father, one being God the Son, one being God the Holy Spirit. Um, to the 2D surface, it seems like three separate circles. But as the surface rotates from 2D into 3D space, you see that the object that's interacting with the 2D surface is actually this 3D object, like a three-leaf clover shape. And as it touches the 2D surface, it's represented in 2D as three separate points. And I think that's a good representation because God's actually this multi-dimensional being, or in this case, a three-dimensional being, and we are a two-dimensional, we're two limited two-dimensional beings. Whereas he interacts with us, he has to limit himself to communicate with us. Um, so I think that's a very good representation of God being this being that is bigger than what we can grasp. And we are limited. We have limited minds, limited comprehension, limited um, capacity, brain capacity. And that's okay. So, yeah, I thought that was a very cool video. Uh, it communicated that point quite well. Hopefully it's, um, it's communicated nicely for you too because it made lots and lots of sense for me. Um, so, in conclusion, um, I want to wrap it up. Um, I'll go into more details of the Godhead and their separate characteristics or their separate, uh, um, their separate persons, separate personhood. Personhoods, is that a word? I don't know. Um, I'll go into that in separate videos. But so in conclusion, so the importance in this case um, within a church setting is more the unity that's important, the unity within the Trinity than the logic of the Trinity. Sometimes it's, it's, it's good for us just to back off from um, the logic of something because we can get caught up in trying to understand something that will break our freaking brains. Um, and to just grasp the unity and the relationship between the Trinity and try and mimic something like that within church and with each other and, and so on. God is three, one God, three in persons. It's okay not to grasp it fully. We're never going to grasp it fully. We're limited brains. We've got, we're limited brains. We've got limited brains, limited understanding. Sometimes we're just not going to understand things and, and that's just the mystery of it. And you need to just be okay with that. Just settle in that. It's okay not to know. For me, the Trinity gives, um, gives more power to God's characteristics like um, when the Bible says God loves, we can trust that he loves because he loved before us. Before he created us, he loved Jesus. He loved the Holy Spirit. There's this unity of love. So when God says he loves, we know he knows how to love and he, he created it, obviously. If we believe that God speaks, then we must believe that he had somebody to speak to before us. So for me, that's a good, a good, a good argument for the Trinity, that God loved someone before we existed god spoke to someone before we existed that spoke within themselves yes um so yeah like i said i'm going to make individual videos about jesus god the father and the holy spirit and you know just cases for why they're part of the godhead and that they're all god etc yeah i hope this made sense um it's quite a complicated issue yeah, anyway, peace out. Love you.